Good afternoon, Nebal. Good afternoon. We'll start in a short while. We are waiting for other participants to join in. Right now we have just two attendees. We are waiting for the rest to join. And once they are there, we'll start. Probably two or three minutes we'll wait. That's it. Hello, welcome. We are just waiting for other participants to join and we'll wait for a couple of minutes more before we start. Those who are here can log into AHA Slides using the code in chat. So either you can scan the QR code using your mobiles or you can click on the link that is there in chat. So you need to join in AHA Slides because this presentation is going to be interactive. So it's important that all of you log into AHA Slides for participation. Two minutes more. Okay, I see someone has joined in. I can see one here. The rest of you, can you also please join? I see four participants. Can you all please join in? I want you to keep your mobile phones next to you and I want you to scan the QR code so that you can participate in the presentation. So either scan the QR code or click on the link that is there in the chat. All right, there's just one participant. What about the rest? Okay, there are two, two now. I want all four to be there, please. It's important because I would get to see how you are thinking and feeling and I'll see your response. I'll also ask you to give your feedback on a few things and your comments on certain things. So it's very, very important that you join in AHA Slides. All right, I have just two participants here. The rest of you, is it okay? Do you, do you have any problem joining in? Can I help you in any way? All right, let's start. 
So good afternoon, everyone. My name is Dr. Richa Goyal, and I work as senior instructor in the Department of Languages at Abu Dhabi University. I'm here to do an interactive presentation on resume writing today. So if you have joined in using the QR code or this link, we might begin. So I'm going to present. This is the code that you have to scan. All right, so Have you all joined in? Okay. We will begin with the first question. How do you feel right now? Okay, one person feels, mm, okay, happy, thinking, expecting something. All right, how about the rest? So I got just one response here. There are three participants. I want you to tell me how you're feeling right now. Are you excited that you are going to discuss something important regarding resume writing? Are you tired and bored? Okay, all right. So I received one response here. What do you expect to learn today? You're happy, okay. What do you expect to learn today? What is it that you're looking forward to? Anything like uh, related to resume writing, definitely, because that is the topic. Many things. Okay. Many things about resume writing. Mm, okay. Like, can you be a bit more specific? Okay. So you're happy and you're expecting many things. Great. Okay. Can you tell me what a resume is? What is a resume? How can we define a resume? What exactly it is? Because we are here to discuss the structure uh, and top tips for writing impactful resumes. So what is a resume? Can someone tell me? All right. So can we say a resume is a document that summarizes your qualifications, experience, and skills? The document that you use to apply for jobs? Yeah? Okay. All right. If you have any questions, you can raise your hand. So there's this raise hand icon on your screen. If you click on that, I'll get to know that you want to ask something. You want me to stop and I'll allow you to speak. Okay. So let's move on. All right, so before we move on to resume writing and we discuss the structure of resumes and different types of resume, let's do a bit of brainstorming. So what do you think? Is it always a good idea to include a photo on your resume? What do you think? Should you always include a photo on your resume? Yes or no? You have to click on yes or no. Okay, there's one response and you say yes. Well, um, it really depends on the country you are in. So both the participants said yes. Yes, in the Middle East, you are required to add your photo on the resume, but there are certain countries where it's not expected, where it's actually not advisable to put a photo because of discrimination that it might create. So there's anti-discrimination laws, which are very strict in certain countries, which forbid recruiters to discriminate on the basis of nationality, age, gender, and looks. And in such countries, you should not add a photo on your resume, including the UK and the US, all right? So uh, this tells us that resume is a bit subjective. You know, it really depends. There's no objective right or wrong. You have to keep in mind the context. You have to keep in mind the country where you are applying. And keeping that in mind, you can either add your photo or keep it out of the resume. All right. So the next question is, what do you think? Do you need a really long resume? The longer your resume is, the better it is. 
uh, you should put everything false. Okay, no. So how long do you think your resume be? Okay, there, I see raised hands. Anyone who wants to talk? All right. Yeah. So your resume should not be very, very long. Why? Because, you know, there was a research done and it was found that recruiters spend almost six seconds screening a resume. So if there is a job, there's a likelihood that hundreds of thousands of applicants will apply for that job and recruiters would not have a lot of time to go through those resumes. So you ha don't have to make it very long. You have to make it impactful or effective by putting the best that you have on one to two pages. All right. So false, you know that. Okay. You should always tell the truth on your resume. You should never lie. Yes or no. Okay. So yeah. Okay. Yeah. Why? Why do you think you should? You can use the chat to reply if you want. What will happen if you lie on your resume? Anyone? What happens if you lie? Will you get caught? Are there chances of getting caught at some point in time later on during the interview? Yes? Yes. Because resume is just the first contact you have with the rec recruiter. After that, you are going to talk to them in detail. You are going to have long discussions. And if you lie on your resume, there are chances that you will get caught. And you will come across as a person who's not very ethical, which is not a good thing. Ethics are a topmost priority for any person recruiting people. So never lie on your resume. It's always a bad idea. All right. Now, I think this is the last question for brainstorming. What do you think? Your resume, on your resume, content is more important than presentation and small mistakes do not matter. So as long as your content is good, small mistakes would not matter. False, false, very good. That's the right answer. It is false. Why? Because your resume is a reflection of who you are. If you cannot create a two-page document correctly, you will come across as a person who is sloppy, careless, lazy, or prob probably a person who doesn't know how to write correctly. And these are the things you need to avoid. This is not the impression you want to give to the other person. So you have to proofread your resume time and time again and probably ask someone else to do it for you because when you write your resume, you might run over the errors that are there because you're so used to looking at them. So you should have a fresh pair of eyes to proofread your resume. Okay. This is what we discussed. It's important to stand out as a person who's neat, well-organized, pays attention to detail, and is careful and competent. It's very, very important. And if you design a resume which is flawless, this is the impression you are going to give to the other person. Okay. So uh, I think Ms. Feather has shared a link with you. Ms. Feather, can you please share the link? To SharePoint. So uh, participants, please, can you use this link in the chat? And this link will take you to three documents. One of the three documents is Julia's CV. I want you to open that CV, all right? And to tell me what is Julia's job. So, what is Julia's job? Can you look at this resume, Julia's resume? It's a good resume constructed in reverse chronological order. I want you to tell me what is her job?
Good afternoon, Ms. Safa. So we are looking at Julia's resume and you have to tell me what is her job. You can post your reply in the chat. Resume, yeah, resume. Okay, so can you tell me what does Julia's resume include? What does it include? In the chat, her internship history, very good, what else? HR as a quick, fast look, okay. She's looking for a job as HR professional and her resume includes her internship history. What else? I want you to scan it quickly and to tell me what are the components? Team leadership, okay, internship history, what else? What else is there? How many sections are there on the resume? See, what is this called at the top? The thing that is there at the top, which has the name and then the address. There are four sections, okay, four main sections. Thank you for that. So this is the intro, is it? Intro body, okay. Header, so we have the header. We have the objective, then the education. This is a part of education. Internship and employment are part of work experience. Header and foot, okay, and activities. All right, so these are the sections of Julia's resume. All right, let's move on. Now, this is the header. As you can see, what is included in the header? Can you tell me? I want your response here in AHA slides. Please look at the header and tell me what does it include? What should go in the header of a resume? Anyone? Okay, six seconds remaining. Personal information, her address, very good. Contact information, very good. So in personal information, if you look at it, do you have her age or marital status or religion or gender? Do you have those things? Like whether she's a male or a female or whether she has kids or she's married? Do you see information like that? You just see the name, then you see the address an email ID, which is professional, okay, a professional email ID. And what else can you add here? Anyone? So you have contact information, you have her address, phone number, email ID, and name. Okay, be very, very careful here. Personal information means only name. You do not have to add personal details unless otherwise asked for. If you're clearly asked for, like if there's a resume form which you have to fill and you have to give details such as your gender or marital status or religion, 
then you can add those details. But if these details are not asked for, please avoid these personal details. Okay, because it's nobody's concern whether you are married or not. You should not be hired based on that. Okay, so the header is at the top of the page. It includes your name, permanent and present address, email address, telephone number, age, marital status, religion, and these details should be avoided. It will appear like this. Your name could be in a slightly bigger font than the rest of the resume. You can Put in bold, phone and email, okay? All right. So after, after header, you see on Julia's resume, you have the objective. What is this objective? What does it include? Look at Julia's resume and tell me what does objective include? It's a pleasure to have you here as well. Okay, so the objective would include the job she is looking for. Very good. So that is one of the three things. There are other two things. The position that she's looking for, it also mentions, see, Full-time position in human resource management, specializing in safety and OSHA compliance, which requires this. Position, which requires this. HR personnel job. Very good, Ms. Sifat. That's, that's great. See, the structure of an objective is this. XXX position in YYY firm which requires ZZZ skills, all right? So this is the structure of objective, X position in Y firm, which requires Z skills. So for example, senior instructor position or senior doctor or senior manager position in this and this private equity firm, which requires financial analysis and other skills right? So this is the objective. Now this objective section is optional. Okay, this objective section is optional. Either you can have an objective as given on the presentation. See, it, it will always begin with two, to obtain a management trainee position with a specialty retail store, to work as technical sales manager with an energy related industry in the southwest, or to work as field service representative with XYZ Software Corporation. All right, so some people feel that it's very important to have the objective after the header because it makes the reader clear what you are looking for. How about in the um, education field? Yes, yeah, you can have an objective there as well in the education field, or you can have a summary. So either of the two things, how to write then? So you can say a teaching position in at tertiary level, teaching position at a school, teaching position at a university, which requires lesson planning, uh, teaching and classroom management skills. So this position, this institute, which requires these skills. Okay, so either you can have an objective or instead of objective, you can have a summary. The summary is a summary statement of what you have achieved in your career and what are your interests. The summary, some people write as a paragraph, but I suggest you write it in bullet points because nobody likes reading paragraphs on a resume. It makes it very wordy and cluttered. All right. So there wouldn't be enough white space if you write a big, long paragraph at the beginning. Uh, now, some people say that the summary or objective sections uh, are optional. You might have, you may choose not to have them at all. You see that on Julia's CV objective, but if you want, you can leave it out. Some people say it's outdated to write summary or objective, but I feel it's important to tell the reader what you're looking for. Okay, it might add an edge to your resume. So if you can write a good summary or good objective, that would be great. 
All right, so that's the second part, though optional. It's the second part on Julia's resume. Okay. Then what do you see next? You see after objective, you see education. So what does this section include? How will you mention uh, what you have studied? What would be the structure? What would it be the components of education section? Would you just uh, mention your degrees? like masters in this, bachelors in this, that's all, or something else you'll add there. So education, but how will you do it? What are the things that you'll include in your education section? Last academic history, thank you, that's great. Very good. You will include your academic history. Very nice. Anything else? Okay, academic history in reverse chronological order. So your education should begin with the latest first. So academic history beginning with latest first, and then you'll move on to the previous academic qualifications. So here, as you can see, Julia has Bachelor of Business Administration, just one qualification. Okay. And in her bachelor's, the major was management with an emphasis on human resources and minor was psychology. She also did a certificate in advanced business communication. So as you can see in education, she has mentioned her degree. She has also mentioned the name of the university, Wilmont University, city where the university is located, St. Louis. Then the date, okay, when was it completed? It was completed in May 2013, the date of completion. If you are expecting to complete, you can always say anticipated date of completion, right? So if you haven't completed the degree, if you're still pursuing a degree, if you're still studying, you still have to put a date. If you're in 21 and you feel that you'll complete the degree by 22, that is what you have to put as anticipated date of completion, all right? Apart from your degree, major, minor, uh, name of the university, place of the university, date of completion, you also have to put your GPA and related coursework. So see, if you say you have done bachelor's in business administration or you have done bachelor's in something, I might not understand what exactly you studied. So it's always a good idea to include related coursework or the specific subjects that you studied during that degree. Yes, if you have a good GPA, mention it. If your GPA, GPA is not something that you're proud of, then leave it out, okay? So your CV is something that uh, should bring your best foot forward. If you're not very proud, leave it out. If it's good, mention it. It supports your resume if, if you mention it, if it's a good GPA, okay? So that is our education section. And definitely it includes these things. Name of institution, city and country, degree, date of graduation, GPA, relevant coursework. If you did any projects during your degree or if you won any awards like gold medal for best academic performance or whatever you achieved, you can mention it in education section. So what is the next section after education? Work experience. So if you look at Julia's CV, you see after education, this is a certification which is a part of education, you have details about internship and employment. So this is basically work experience. What did uh, Julia do? Yes, I completely agree. Good GPA does not mean that the candidate is right, but it does show that the person worked hard. Okay, good GPA does suggest that you are a hardworking person and you believe in excelling in whatever you do. All right, so it's not completely useless. Right, that is why you have all the scores. You have SAT scores. Why do universities look at scores? So. Yes, that is not everything, but that, that is something. That is why you have other sections like skills wherein you can talk about other things, public speaking, etc. All right. So yeah, if, if it's something that you're proud of, please put it there. 
All right, so next section is related to work experience. And like education, your work experience should also be in reverse chronological order, which means beginning from the most recent first, and then you move back, all right? So here you can see Julia CV, what are the sections that go in work experience? Extra activities, all right? Okay, yes, you can, for example, if you don't have paid work experience, you can definitely talk about volunteering experience. You can talk about anything you did that suggests that you can uh, give yourself to a job. You can live a job. You can do your best in a job. Okay. So even if you did not earn money, it shows that you're motivated to work. Right. So work experience might include extra activities. What else? If you look here, you will see the designation, you'll see the name of the company, city, date. So she, st she started working in 2011 and she's working there till present. And what is this bulleted lists? This is the role that she played, the responsibility she held or her achievements in that job. All right. So your work experience will include these things. Details of full-time and part-time jobs, even if you were self-employed, you did something, you can put it there. Internships, volunteer work, practicum, field work, or paid work. Everything can go in work experience. So some students feel like, I don't have any work experience, I'm a fresh graduate. So these students can definitely talk about, or freshers or fresh college graduates can write about their volunteer work or internships or field work or projects, okay? So you have to include the title, that is uh, the job title, then date, institution name, and responsibilities, okay? All right, what comes after work experience? So these are the mandatory parts. You have to have a header, you need an objective, you need education, you need work experience, and then are the optional parts. You can add other things after that. What else would you like to add after you are done with education, work experience, objective, and header? You would have some space left. Your resume can run on to maximum two pages. So uh, if you have some space left, what would you like to talk about on the resume? Interests, very good. Interests or hobbies you can talk about. You can also talk about special skills. Skills, yes, skill section. What skills do you have? Language skills, computer skills, software skills, whatever, you know, job related skills. You can talk about your skills. You can talk about your interests and hobbies. Very nice. Anything else? Somebody raised a hand. Okay, that's one answer. Okay. All right. So these are the optional parts of a resume. Now, this is very, very important. What do you think? What will you bring first? Some people feel that work experience should come before education. Yeah, very good, Ms. Safat. Whatever adds value to the organization, those details can come as optional sections later on. Awards, honors, publications, okay, whatever you feel is important there. All right, so here's the question. After header and objective, some people put work experience first, Others want to put education first. Some put skills first. What should go first? Like here, these are the mandatory parts. You need the header, you need objective. Okay, this is optional. But what should go first? Education or work experience? What do you think? What will you put first? Education? Well, yes and no, it really depends. It's very, very subjective. So you have to organize your resume around your strengths. If you have a lot of work experience skills, bravo, okay, very good. For example, if you have a lot of work experience, it's suggested that you bring in work experience first. For example, you have a long history, 20 year long history of work experience. So in that case, work experience section will come before. Now, if you're a fresh college graduate, you don't have that much work experience, but you have a good academic experience, that should go first. If you have a, a 
work experience which was not continuous there were breaks in your work experience right and uh, but but you did acquire a lot of skills then skills will go first so the traditional resume is the reverse chronological resume in which you have the work experience going first all right a functional resume focuses on skills and academic experience if you don't have work experience your skills and academic experience will go first and a combination resume not swot swot will not go here uh, ms safat okay swot so is a different thing that that's a different analysis on your resume you will have these sections after header work experience education skills and other optional parts okay so that is it all right now skills and work experience okay so we've discussed this part that you have to organize it around your strengths whatever is your strong forte you bring that first all right okay now this is very important and this is the place where most of the resumes have errors okay this is the part <coughs> excuse me the employment part or the work experience part here you see there's a bulleted list so for example julia worked as team lead and this is what she did she uh, was promoted was named she created she trained she participated in and she set the weekly schedule so these are the things julia did right and so whenever you mention what you achieved or what you did in a job you have to mention it in a bulleted list when you make a bulleted list you have to be very very careful there are few things you have to take care of you have to use parallel structure you have to start each line with an active verb you have to take care of your tenses you have to be concise though you have to provide details but you have to do that in a concise manner and you have to tailor whatever you are saying to the job requirements you have to study what does the person who is about to hire me want and then you have to tailor whatever you are going to put there according to that in the employment section uh, it really depends you know if you have lot of work experience you might want to pick and choose the best she mentioned two we don't know maybe she had only two all right but you have to see how much work experience you have and then you'll pick and choose that which is directly related to the job which is why for every a job application you have to edit your cv you can't use the same resume again and again you have to keep changing it according to the requirements of the job all right so if you have long history probably you will pick and choose or probably you will uh, uh, something that is not related to the job you might want to drop it or you might give it in a condensed manner so that the bulleted list is not very long so it really depends okay that's very subjective i think all right so uh, these are the things you have to keep in mind now what is parallel structure and what do you mean by active verbs so this is something that we are going to look at in detail so what are active verbs i said in this bulleted list you have to use active verbs can you give me some examples of active verbs what are active verbs i see there are 10 attendees but here i see only four participants so everyone who has joined in late can you please go to ahaslides.com/ycqb to participate in this i want everyone to be there because we are going to have a quiz towards the end it would be a 10 there would be just 10 questions on the quiz and i believe all of you would want to participate in the quiz it, it it would be very interesting okay so please join in you can either scan the qr code but we don't have the qr code here so you can just 
go to ahaslides.com yczqb or you can click on the link in the chat shared by ms feather thank you ms feather so you have to go to ahaslides.com and then you have to enter the code yczqb all right so let me see if i i see that one more participant is there can all of you please join in Dr. Muhammad, Ms. Dhania, Ms. Heba, uh, Mr. Hussam, Ms. Sifat, Nibal, Rania, Salma, and Thabit. It would be great to have you here. Sorry, I can't read Arabic, so I can't read the last name. All you have to do is you have to go to ahaslides.com from your mobile phone browser. and then enter this code that is there yczqb and that will bring you here so that you'd be able to participate i'd be able to hear your voice okay all right so this code is there in each slide it's fine so give examples of active verbs okay no examples verbs are action words as you know and on your resume in your experience section you should use strong verbs don't say responsible for don't say was don't say was part of a team don't say was responsible try to use verbs which are active and not passive okay and there you see a list of all the strong active verbs which could be used to highlight certain skills for example to show communication or people skills you can say developed discussed drafted edited to show creative skills you can use verbs like conceptualized created formulated established fashioned displayed all these ver verbs are strong and they are active so please start your bulleted list and experience section with with such verbs okay there's more here so you have for data and financial skills for management skills helping skills teaching skills if you are interested anyone research skills and technical skills these are the strong verbs you can use in experience section all right now what is parallel structure i told you that on that bulleted list you also have to use parallel structure what exactly is parallel structure so ms safat you have Uh, done english 2 so you should be knowing what is a par what is parallel structure and why should we use parallel structure same grammatical structure bravo very good very good okay so i got just one response pa two responses thank you for your response participants three very good bravo okay and same grammatical structure is the right answer well done so parallel structure means same grammatical structure so when you make your bulleted list you have to use the same grammatical structure if you look here every item on the list begins with a verb verb is the action word was promoted was is a helping verb and then you have promoted was named create train participate set these are all verbs and the list begins with verbs this is parallel it's par parallel is easy to understand is reader friendly it's cognitively easy to read and understand parallel lists so one characteristic of good writing is parallel structures so whenever you make your bulleted list make it parallel make it similar see consulted analyzed researched participated prepared okay now let's move on i see there are seven participants very good that's great all right now does this look parallel to you was responsible for group of 10 present reports to instructors new template was developed leader of university science committee 
coordinate monthly review of students magazine. Is this parallel? Do you think it's parallel? Number three is not parallel. Thank you. New template is a noun. Okay, how about leader? It's also not par parallel because leader is also a noun. Was is a verb. Present is a verb. Coordinate is a verb. Responsible is sort of not a strong verb, but okay, it's fine. Was is a verb at least. So these two are, do not begin with verbs. And to make this parallel, what we can do is we can change it like this. Managed group of 10. See, instead of was responsible, it's better to say managed. Why? Because it's an active verb. So instead of saying was responsible, say managed group of 10. Presented reports to instructors. Developed new template led university science committee and coordinated monthly review of students magazine. So as you can see, all the items on the list begin with verb in the past tense. You're talking about an experience, for example, that you had in the past. This is not your present job. It looks much more specific. Thank you. All right. So if you're talking about a job that you did in the past, you are no, no longer there, then use past tense. If you're still in the job, then use present tense and say manage, present, develop, let, lead, coordinate. All right, so you have to take care of tense as well. All right, let's move on. So this is bulleted list here on the CV. It's very important to make it parallel and to use active verbs now. There's another resume I want you to look at. It's Manny's resume and I'll give you 10 minutes, but I don't think we have 10 minutes. I'll give you five minutes. Why do you have to look at Manny's resume? Because after you look at Manny's resume, I'll ask you to take a quiz, all right? So based on what we have discussed today and based on these two resumes, you are going to answer. 10 questions on the quiz and we will have a leaderboard. We'll see who does the best. We'll see who answers fastest and best, okay? So this is Manny's resume. This is also in reverse chronological order. As you can see, it's also a one pager resume. So a resume is a summary. It's not, it's not very long. So maximum you can have two pages. These ones are one pager resumes, very reader friendly, very doable in six seconds, not difficult for the, uh, for the reader, okay, to read and scan. All right, so you have the same resume, you have header, objective, education, work experience, and more work experience related to the university. So you have five minutes to look at it, and then look at it very carefully. Look at style, look at structure, and then we'll start the quiz once you're ready, all right? It is 4.48 and you have till 4.53 to scan both the resumes, Julia's and Manny's. You can download them and open them on your desktop. Okay, I see five participants here out of 10. If someone wants to join in, and take the quiz. I see 14 attendees here, but only uh, six participants. So if you want to join in a very exciting quiz, please go to ahaslides.com and enter this code YCZQB. Share the link for download. Okay, so the link is here. If you scroll up, let me try copy paste it. Miss Feather, can you please uh, share? Thank you so much. So here's the link. You have three files here. So first one is Julia's resume. Second is Manny's resume. And third is the reference sheet for references. And this is how you create your reference sheet. So you can use this. So anytime you have to create your resume, you can look at these and you can mirror the style. Obviously, you have to change it based on what you have, but this is the basic layout and structure. 
which you can keep in mind while developing your own resume. Okay, it's good to see all the attendees here. Okay, three minutes more, and then we'll start the quiz. Come on, please join in, it'll be fun. Your name, it'll be anonymous. Your name will not be displayed. So even if you make a mistake, it's fine. All right, it's completely anonymous on the leaderboard. Um, okay, yeah, if, if you, you'll have your display name. I think you'd be able to choose the name that you have to display, right, Ms. Veda, am I right? Can they put any name they want or would their real name be displayed when they are taking the quiz? No, for the quiz, they can uh, put any name. They can put they any can. name. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. So see, that's great. You know, you can put any name you want. You can put a fictional name there. Right, you can put Johnny Depp or Jack Sparrow or whatever. Right, so please join in. Uh, you'll you'll get to play. You'll get to see uh, whether your concepts related to resume writing are clear, and it'll be fun. Ah, oh, yes, you can definitely use the initials. That would be great. So two minutes to go, and then we'll start the quiz. By the way, there are several resume templates in Word which you could use if you want. And there are templates everywhere. It's just that you have to keep in mind the basics. Don't make it very long. Don't make it cluttered. Don't make it ugly. Make it reader friendly. Maximum two pages should be there. The organization should be such that it brings the best out of you. So uh, organize it as per your strengths and include all the details that are required. Do not miss out on important details. In a header, please do not add personal details such as your age, gender, religion, etc. Be very careful about the country, about the city where you're applying. Okay, so it'll things like whether or not to include your picture, whether or not to include personal details, what type of personal details would all depend on where you are applying. All right, so there is a bit of subjectivity involved and uh, you have to do your background, you have to do your background research before you write your resume. And for every job, you have to write a new resume because you have to tailor it as per the requirements of the job. All right, okay, so I think we should start the quiz now. Okay, waiting for players to join. Seven, anyone else? Okay, so we have SS, we have Dora, we have Hello. They're just three players, RM. For some. All right, SH. So we have six players. Everyone, please join in. There are two more. Seven, okay. So welcome, Jam. Okay, one more. We'll wait for a minute before we start. Oh, somebody left. Join in again. We'll start in a minute. Everyone, don't leave. Okay. All right, then let's start. Here we go. Start the quiz. So if you answer fast, you'll get more points. 
Look at your phone. Abbreviations must be used on your resume. And you have 30 seconds to answer this, yes or no. Should you use abbreviations? Are abbreviations allowed? Abbreviations are short forms. Okay. No, very good. And that's the right answer. So you should not use abbreviations. For example, Abu Dhabi University, I write a resume, I put ADU. Would everyone understand what ADU is? Probably not. So though the abbreviation is very familiar to you, it makes a lot of sense. It might not to the reader. So please do not use abbreviations. Uncommon. If, if an abbreviation is very, very common, it's fine, right? MS Excel, you can use. Everyone know, knows MS is Microsoft. So that's fine. Okay, so let's see. Who did first? Okay, so RM is at the top. So it's not only the correct answer, though all of you, many of you did uh, answer incorrectly, but there are marks for answering it fast as well. So if you answer correctly and also fast test, then you will be at the top. So well done, RM. And then we have SS and Jam, Dora, Husam, and Hello. All right, let's move on to the second question. You must ask someone to read and proofread your resume. Yes or no? Fifteen seconds remaining. Yes, very good. All of you answered it correctly. In the beginning, we discussed that you might get tired and you might not be able to see your mistakes. It's very important that that one piece of paper or one document is flawless. Not even one punctuation should be wrong on your resume. All right. So you cannot afford to make any small mistakes. So please, after you have revised and proofread it a thousand times, give it to someone else to do it for you. Perfect. Let's see who did it the fastest. RM again. Well done, RM. And then we have Dora, I think, maintaining her position. And okay, that's cool. All right, let's move on to our third question. One must use dash verbs. All right, you have to pick the right answer. On your resume, what kind of verbs should you use? Active and strong verbs, very good. Please take care that the verbs should show action, should be strong. All right, let's see who answered it fastest. Dora at the top. Okay, so Arum went to position three and SS came up and Dora also came up. All right, perfect. Okay, let's move on to the next question. Question four out of 10. And let's see what it is. Bulleted list should use dash. Long sentences, parallel structure or passive verbs. Two, one, and time up. Parallel structure, very good. We discussed it in detail. Please remember that any list, even if it's not on a resume, even if it's in your email, if you are going to create a bulleted list, it should always be in parallel structure. It could be in your report, in your research paper, in your email, and especially on your resume because it got to be flawless. All right, so parallel structure. Let's see who answered the fastest. Dora again, maintaining her position. The first three have maintained their position. Then we have SS, Hello, Jam, and SH, Anupma, and F. Okay, so Anupma and F are at the same position, 179 points. 
All right, so Dora and Hosam both gained 93 points because they answered it exactly in the same amount of time. All right, so let's move on to our fifth question. Short, concise, easy to read phrases should be used on your resume. Yes or no? Phrases is a group of words. Should your group of words on resume be short, concise, and easy to read? Yay, okay, let's look at the answer. Uh, the leaderboard here, the answer is given. Dora Hossam RM, same, 95, 95, 95, 95, okay. So you are all 100% sure that your language should not be long. Your language should not be loose. It should be condensed. It should be crisp. So any unnecessary words that clutter your resume should be removed. Look at your resume again and see is there there shouldn't be even a single word that you could do without. If you can do without that word, please take it out of your resume. Your writing should be very, very crisp. It's very important, okay? Yes, well done. Let's look at the sixth question. Personal pronouns such as I, me could be used on the resume. Two, one, and time's up. Let's see. No, very good. You should not use I, me. Now see, if you see the objective section, you see that it begins with two. It does not begin with I am looking for. It says to find this position, right? If you go on to... Anywhere else, you don't have sentences, right? It begins with two, and there here, the bulleted list begins with verb. So the subject I does not come in on the resume ever, okay? Be it summary or objective, do not use I, okay? So bullet create bulleted list beginning with verb. I and me are used more often in cover letters, but on resume, personal pronouns are avoided. Okay, let's see. Again, the same 96, 93, 84. Okay, so Hello got 88 points, uh, which is more than her sum. Jam got 93, which is almost like SS. SH got 95, which is very close to Dora. Well done, SH. And 96, F, very good. So you can, you are improving, you can beat Dora if you want. All right, we have still seven, eight, nine, ten, four questions to go. So question seven. The best font to use is, what type of font should be used on the resume? So there are three options, you have to pick one. Apple Chancery, size 16, Baskerville Old Face size 10, or Times New Roman size 12. And time's up. Well, all of you know it has to be Times New Roman. Basco will know. Do not have decorative fonts. Your resume should look very, very professional. Some people use Arial or Calibri, but Times New Roman is still the best because it's a serif font. Serif font is that font which has small lines 
at the end of letters and it is said that serif font is easier to read it's most reader friendly so always have a serif professional font and times new roman is the best for that size 12 do not have different forms font sizes across your resume your title uh, headings you know of different sections like work experience education skills objective could be slightly bigger your name could be slightly bigger but usually use for the text size 12 and times new roman very good calibri and arial are acceptable but times new roman is the best all right so we have 93 90 94 93 and 92 points Okay, very good. Let's move on. Eighth question. When the resume is sent online, one must use Word format. So you have to send someone your resume. You should use Word format to send it. Five seconds, three, two, one, and time's up. No, yes, all right. Now see the thing with word format is it might open differently on each computer, okay? So if you, uh, for example, create your resume on Word or on pages, it might look different on different computers. The layout might get messed up. So the only way is PDF. You should always PDF your resume so that whoever, wherever opens it, it looks as you want it to look. So always PDF your resume before sending it across online. So here we have the leaderboard and hello has come up. Well done, hello. And we have Dora and SH is at third position and RM here though did 90, got 94 points and Jam here did not answer this and Anupama also did not answer. All right, step up all of you. We have just two more questions left. Question nine. References should be a part of the resume. So references, you know, the list of references, the name of your referees with their contact details, should you make it a part of your resume, yes or no? Five, four, three, two, one, and time's up. Oops. Okay, no. Reference list should always be a separate sheet. So see if you go to the files, SharePoint, you'll see there's a reference sheet and it's a separate sheet. Never send your references unless asked for. So you have to prepare this reference list, references for Julia, references for your name, your header with all your contact details. And then there are four references here, include complete information, their designation, institute, address, telephone, and email, professional email, okay, not their personal email. So this reference list should always be kept ready with you and you have to send it across when the person asks for it. If someone does not ask, do not send it. Now, some people like putting this line at the end of the resume, references should be made available on request. However, nowadays people feel that it's not required. It's sort of uh, redundant and obsolete. Why? Because obviously if the recruiter if the person who's hiring you asks for references, you will provide him or her references, right? So then there's no need to put that one line. Why? It doesn't hurt, but it takes space 
And on your resume, we are saving every bit of space. We want a lot of white space to make it reader friendly and fun. We don't want to clutter it with things which are unnecessary. So keep the reference list ready. Whenever they will definitely ask for it at some point, send it then. Okay. Let's look at our leaderboard. So hello, still at the top. And then we have for some Dora, SH, SS, RM, Jam, F, and Anupma. All right. So no points. Okay. Maybe because it was wrong answer. All right. So here's the last question for the quiz. Personal information such as age, gender, height, weight, marital status, photograph, etc., should be included. Well, we did it so many times. It shouldn't be difficult at all. <laughs> okay, good. Those who are not there in our slides have replied here in the chat. All right. I expect a 100% response here and all should be correct. Ah, no, no, please, no. Unless specifically asked for, do not include because it's nobody's business. And ideally, people should not be discriminated based on these personal information, right? Nobody's business how old you are or which gender you belong or your height or weight. So please keep these details out of your resume. It should be completely professional. If somebody asks for it, then provide those details, otherwise not. All right, so Hello wins the quiz. Well done, Hello, with 830 points. Congratulations. Okay, so participants, those of you who are here, see, uh, resume writing is a very long topic. And there's only so much we can do in the given time. So we have done the basics. If you have any questions, you can let me know. Uh, my email is richa.goyal at adu.ac.ae. So you can get in touch with me and you can ask your questions. If you want me to look at your resumes, I'll even do that for you only for those who are there, okay, in this uh, presentation. So please feel free to ask any questions you might have. There are different types of resumes these days. You have, uh, the, we, we talked about pr traditional print resume done in reverse chronological order, largely. You have web, re web resume, a website resume. You have video resumes these days, wherein uh, people say that, okay, just record a two minute video talking about yourself. We don't want to read any paper. We don't want to see how you look on page. We want to see how you look in real life. So those are video resumes. You have website resumes. You have LinkedIn pages and the links to LinkedIn you can add in the header. So there are different ways of creating your resumes. We looked at the traditional style. Okay, so please keep in mind these basics and let me know if you have any questions. Yes, uh, Galaxy A50s, you can definitely, oh, it's Anupama. You can definitely send me your resume and I'd be happy to look at it and provide my suggestions. Okay, so here's my email, richard.goyal, R is small. So lowercase r at adu.ac.ae because you are here, you are one of the participants, you can send your resume to me. All right, do you have any questions? Anyone? All right, sure, Mr. Fath. Any questions? Please feel free to ask any questions you have. Cannot see. Okay, my email is here. See, just crawl up. It's here. Share, where is the, yeah. Well, Thank you, Ms. Feather. So this is my email. All right, so it was great having you here and thanks a lot for participating in today's presentation. Thank you so much. Do let me know anytime if you have any questions. Thank you.
Uh, Miss, we have Tanzil mm -hmm. raising the hand. All right, uh, okay. Yeah, Miss Tanzil. So, uh, can you please allow her to talk? Yes, yes, you're allowed to talk. Okay. Hi, Miss Tanzil. Miss Tanzil, you can speak. Is she muted? I don't think so, Ms. Tada. No, no, you're, you're, you can't talk. You can unmute and talk. But uh, I, maybe, I don't know. Oh, I have to there unmute, is, no, is it? No? It's, um, no, um, I think Mr. Sanzil, can you oh, unmute yourself? Oh, you have to, uh, you have to unmute yourself. Yeah, I'm asking you to yeah. unmute yourself. Can okay. you just do that? Okay, if there is a problem with your mic, can you uh, put your question in the chat, please? No. Okay, let okay. me uh, ask to unmute. I think you'll have to unmute yourself or... There are lots of websites and it's confusing. I completely agree. If you look at resume, uh, assistance, you will get so much material, you will definitely get confused, which is why I have provided you two samples. These are safe, foolproof samples. You can copy the style in these samples. Some people like using two column format. Two column is easy because you don't have to read a long sentence till the end across the page. So some people believe using a two column format is easier and it's more reader friendly. So you, if you look at word templates, you'll see that many of them are two uh, column formats, okay? But please, whichever you use, try to be objective and scientific because you know, there are certain um, formats which include giving points to yourself, like my language skills, five, and then you'll have five dots there, or you'll have a bar all colored. Well, visually it looks good, but it's not scientific. It's better to give your IELTS score there. Yeah, you can use Julia and Manny's. Uh, you can use your word template, that's fine. But I do not like many templates which are available because again, you know, they are very subjective. I can give myself five out of five on each of the things, you know, th those bars and those circle things. Have you seen those? Wherein you say language skills, five out of five. Management skills, five out of five. Okay, so please don't do that. Try to be objective, better quote numbers. Okay, increased performance by uh, 20%, okay? Or uh, I'll score probably eight band, whatever, you know? So use numbers instead of using subjective things. You can use a two column format. So there are different things, there are different websites. It's better to make it professional, not fussy. And how about the cover letter, Ms. Afat? Yeah, cover letter is a different topic. It's uh, uses a style which is different from resume writing because cover letter is the place where you can actually insert your voice, all right? And you have to be innovative and creative. Your cover letter should not be drab and dull and boring and cookie cut. It should be different. You should stand out. I should be able to hear your voice through your cover letter. It's subjective. You can use I, me, my. You have to highlight the most important achievements of your career and education and skills. And you have to sort of not only paraphrase your resume, you are not explaining your resume in your cover letter, you are making a point there. So usually you have three body paragraphs in your cover letter wherein you talk about first your experience, your work, your education and your skills, but you do it in a different manner and it's a long topic. So I don't think we can do it today. <laughs> A cover letter should not be short sentences or points. Never use bulleted list on your cover letter. It should be your language. I should be able to see your personality and style of writing, okay? So always use, always use nicely crafted sentences on your cover letter, okay? Not bulleted list, never. When to use CV and when to use resume? That's a very good question. Now see, what is a CV curriculum? Vitae and resume, right? So 
usually uh, these these words depend on countries like in the us resume is a short resume two pages maximum if you use the lingo used in united states and cv is a long version which can go up to 10 pages or even more right cv is usually used in academics so if you want to apply for the position of university professor you will create a cv and the cv includes details about your publications about your academic qualifications and achievements in a greater detail the project work the research work publications awards honors so usually academicians use cv but in marketing hr in all these business related fields you use resume all right that is about the us however in uk it's a bit different uh, because in uk also the cv cannot be 10 page long cv is longer than resume but it would be maximum four pages all right so it really depends but the rule of the thumb is if you are an academician if you are applying at a university if you are applying at a as as a student to another university then you have to submit your cv otherwise you have to submit your resume all right two page your resume not a long cv so basically the summary of whole cv yeah cv focuses more on academic side you know it's usually more academic in nature when yeah jeez miss afat um uh, you might call me on sunday okay so sunday between 1 to 3 i'm free and you can call me then cv can be more than two pages yes so cv is definitely longer than a resume and as i told you cv can go up to 10 pages uh, in the us but in the uk it tends to be shorter but cv usually is lengthy and it can go up to 10 pages not but not never resume never okay so that's the basic difference now if you look at the word cv cv in latin is curric uh, is course of life curriculum vitae vitae vitality okay so curriculum is course of life so you sort of tell your entire history course of life resume is a short thing so you look at the word itself all right any other questions anyone regarding resume or cvs i see there are 13 attendees there any more questions please let me know all good thank you so much ben i'll stop sharing my screen and please feel free to write to me or to talk to me if you have any questions thank you so much everyone for participating